Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com and this is the first in a series of videos about learning how to use um, Stencil.js. So Stencil.js is, well really what Stencil is, is a compiler for web components. And let's talk about this whole web component thing for uh, um, a minute. So imagine like if you're programming something in HTML. So let me just open up Visual Studio Code for a second, create a new file. Okay, and Visual Studio Code is a great editor to choose. So you'll need a editor for a lot of the projects going on in this video series. So you could use Visual Studio Code, you could use Atom, you could use Sublime. There's a lot of different choices. Okay, but let's see here. Let me make an HTML boilerplate. So we'll just call this, I gotta save it. Do, 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 do. Example, HTML. Okay, so. We make my HTML boilerplate. Oh, there we go. Okay, so you have all these tags, right? So I can sit there and I can make a div tag. This div tag will represent sort of a part of my website. In this case, really just a block of content. But wouldn't it be nice if I could create a slider and like usually if you're, if you're using some sort of CSS framework and you want to use like their slider or their um, cards or whatnot, you, you, you're copying like a big block of code. You're copying, you know, a bunch of ULs, LIs, and it just ends up making your HTML file looking very murky with lots of code. And then on top of it, you have a lot of sort of other code kind of hidden away in the JavaScript file, styling in a CSS file. So everything's kind of spread out. And it can be a little tricky to figure out what goes with what. What styles go with what parts of your website? What parts of your website go with what JavaScript? Um, only it would be nice if you can kind of organize this all based on the different parts of your website, the different components of your website. And if I had all that bundled in and my slider was just something like this. Slider or slider slash slider or slider like that. And then basically that would just be my slider and it just knows that my slider works a particular way. That's essentially what web components do. They allow you to take different um, user interface elements and basically break them down to what looks like an HTML tag. Now if you've used like uh, React, uh, Angular 2 or any of the more recent versions of Angular, uh, Vue, you probably are familiar with how they do components. Okay, So you will define components in Vue, React or Angular and you'll be able to put them in your HTML file and basically it'll know that this is the component that you created. Um, the always the issue is, is if I create a component in React, I, the whole website's got to be, be using the React framework in a sense, okay? Um, they're not framework agnostic. So Angular components aren't going to work with a website built on React and React components aren't going to work on a website built with Angular um, because um, it's all working off that same uh, script, that same, same same library, okay? So what Stencil.js offers is a way of creating web components. So you can create those web components, but not have them necessarily tied down by any um, framework. The reason is it's not necessarily a rendered server side. It's what it is, it's compiled. So Stencil is really more of a compiler, okay? So what you do is you, you create your web components and then you can compile them down to code that meets sort of current web standards. So that way you could literally just, it basically becomes a, a file you just include in your HTML and you can start plopping the tag wherever you want in your code. So that's sort of the, the, the benefit of Stencil. It allows you to create framework agnostic web components. Cool. Okay, and uh, that's sort of the premise there. Now this is something you're gonna need Node for. So if you haven't downloaded Node onto your computer, you're gonna wanna download Node by going to node.js.org. You can get it for Windows, Linux, or Mac. So um, you can download either version. Again, the long-term long -term support version just means that you're fine if you don't update for a very long time because you know they're gonna be supporting that current version. While the latest current version, um, they come out with another one of those like every few months. So in that case, you 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 have to make sure you keep up and upgrade your uh, your node. Okay, so that's all that is. Make sure you download that. 
and that's just going to have no sort of working in your system. But if you're on Windows, like if you're on Linux or Mac, it's just going to automatically just start working in your terminal, and life's okay. On Windows, it'll actually com come with its own specific version of the command prompt. So basically, you want to search your node files or basically search for it in your computer. Let me actually close this one, open a new one. And it's the same thing as your Windows command prompt, except now you can type in commands like npm. Okay, all your commands in Node are going to start with either npm, if you're talking about the Node package manager, which is, think of it as sort of like, you know, how the iTunes store, you can download iPhone applications. The Node package manager is where you download packages for adding functionality to your, your Node program, which is programmed in JavaScript. So everything in Node is JavaScript. Um, unless you want to use TypeScript, you can download TypeScript and add that functionality to a package. Okay, so if I wanted to install a package, I would just type in like npm i or install, and then the name of the package. We'll come back to that. So you want to download that, and what we need to do is find the folder for us to do a project and start setting everything up. Okay, so I'm going to go to my projects folder, and then I have a stencil folder in there. Correct. And then what you're going to do here, okay, from, 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 from what the command is right over here. Now, if you haven't installed stencil on your system, you're going to want to run this first. So let's just run that first. I've done it in the past, but let's just do it again. So you'll run this, and this will just kind of install stencil into your node environment so that way you can call the template maker. So you're going to install this, this core stencil, which installs it globally, and you'll be able to create a stencil, um, a stencil project from wherever. Okay. Do, 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 do. Okay. Let's do it this way. Okay. Make a folder called stencil one. Okay. Let's go into that folder, stencil one. And create a new project. Now, in that folder, what we're going to do is we're going to run this command over here npm in its stencil. So now it's going to look for that stencil core package and just start a project. So let me go back to the thing. So npm init stencil. Let's see if it all works fine. Yep, and it's working. So it's going to kickstart in a second. Doot, 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 doot. There it goes. Now you have three choices. You can do this Ionic PWA, Progressive Web Application. Basically, it has all the basic stuff. So you can, because the team behind Ionic is the team that built Stencil. So here they have this, which is really meant for like building like mobile UIs, um, the Ionic libraries. That's kind of what it's geared towards. Um, and a Progressive Web Application, what it is, it's essentially a mobile application. That instead of sending out to the app store, you make it as a web a freestanding website. So that way people can use it. It's pretty much designed with a mobile mindset and can be used, but it can be used in the browser. Um, just as much as you could use an app through a, a separate app. Now, if you just want to create a generic web app, here you go. And if you're just looking not to create a whole application, a whole website, but just like an individual component, like you wanted to create a a let's say slider component or a card component or something like that, you would go to component. Okay. Um, boop, 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 boop. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a app. Theoretically, in the same way you can create a whole application with like React, you can create a whole application with um, Sensel. So project name, we're just gonna say this is practice. Yep. Okay, and these are just a list of some of the commands that your project has. Okay, npm start starts your development server. npm run build builds your components app, so that way you can use them in production. And npm test just runs a bunch of tests and everything. So now we need to go into the folder, which it makes a folder inside the folder. So cd practice. And theoretically, I can just run the development environment now. npm start and it will work it'll queue up our sort of the template website that it has Whoop. since is not being recognized as an internal or external command operable 
Oof, 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 oof. It's not really listening to another man. It's all cool. Interesting. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. We're going to go into code here. And when, when you type in code dot, it just tells it to open up this folder in VS Code. So if it was like, if you had Atom as your editor, you can just type in like Atom dot, Sublime, it's something else, dot, but it just means open this folder in this program. Okay, and this is basically how your stencil program is going to look like. So here's your package JSON. Everything looks fine, but for some reason, not running fine, run npm, I'll just do this, npm run start. So that makes a difference. Start. It's probably a problem with npm, but there's likely additional logging out above. Hmm. Node modules are missing. So in that case, if that's the case, what I want to do is I'm going to do an npm i. What that'll do is it'll look in the package.json see if there's any dependencies that are, and basically install the dependencies. So if there's anything we're missing, it should install it based on our package JSON, because basically it comes with a template package JSON, which kind of lists the dependencies. So it's gonna look for these two packages, download them, make sure that it's all functioning. Okay, so that's what it did. So now let's try running that again, npm start. Okay, now it seems to be working. Okay, again, this is dev mode. That's why it's taking so while, because it's like pre-compiling everything. Okay, and then you're going to end up with this sort of stents. This is a starter app. I can click on this button, takes me to this page, and, you know, Nothing too exciting, but when you look in the code, some cool stuff is going on. So just to give you a tour of all the files, so again, your package JSON. Generally, you don't need to touch this. It's kind of all set for you unless you want to change like the name of, of this, you know, change it from practice or put your author name or whatever. But otherwise, you can leave this alone. Um, let's see here. Then if you go here, source, this is where all your development files are, okay? So everything that you're gonna to wanna to work with is gonna be in the source folder. Pretty much anything outside of that you don't wanna to touch. This www folder is gonna where, when it compiles, when you do npm run build, it's going to run it and then build your assets here. Okay, so here's where you're, you'll actually end up creating like another folder called www even further in here that holds all your compiled stuff. Um, cool, so I would leave that there. Okay, boom, 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 boom. So let's take a look at source. So the way it works is that all your components are in this component folder. Every component gets a folder. Okay, and then here we have three components already. Now, if I wanted to create my own component, I would run this generate command, and it'll set everything up for you. So watch what happens. Let's do that. Okay, I'm gonna cancel out the server. Yes. Okay, npm generate. Choo, 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 choo. Oh, I think it's supposed to be like npm run generate. There it goes. So there it goes, and then what happens, and it's basically you could also call by doing stencil generate. But what that does is it'll allow me to create a new component, and I can create a component name. So we'll say this is a card component. Oh, can, can't contain uppercase letters, so let's run that again. Let's just try it by saying stencil generate. Okay, npm run generate cool and we'll just say card comp or card component 
Oh, has to have a dash. Okay. So let's do that again. So there are certain conventions in Stencil. The reason it does that is just to make sure it doesn't conflict with other components. Um, so everything has to have a dash. So card, comp. There we go. Which files do I want to generate? So here I can figure out if there's anything else I want to add to it. I'm just going to leave it alone. Cool. Now it sets everything up for you. So basically, you have four files. Now these two files here, like the spec.ts and the e2e.ts, you don't need to worry about those. Those have to do with when you're running tests. Um, what you do care about is the TSX file. TSX is the extension for TypeScript. This is all written in TypeScript, which is a superset of JavaScript. And this is where you actually program your components. So all your component logic and setup is going to be here. And then the CSS file will style the component. Okay, those are the really the two files you want to work with. So then you can explore these files of the, you know, basically this whole app root, app profile, app home in that manner. So everything kind of starts with, let's get all these here, app root. That's sort of the where everything starts. So if we go there, and actually even before we go there, let's go to this index.html. See, the only thing it does, so this is the index.html file. The only thing it does is call the app root component. And you can see how it's linked up by looking at, you know, the link files here. So you can kind of get an idea of how it's all constructed. Cool. So it calls the app root component. So let's take a look at the app root component. And inside the app root component, all it does is seems to call the router. Okay, so the stencil router basically just says, hey, which component, to, you know, it basically allows you to be a traffic controller of components. Okay, so saying do 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 or an app home exact equals true. Uh, da, 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 switch. Basically, just saying that these two routes. So if you're going if you're going there from the the root website, then it's going to show you this component. If it's going there from this URL, it's going to go to this component. And then here. See how there's a colon there? That's a URL parameter. So technically, if I did slash profile slash Alex, it'll take it in as a variable. So that's what that's saying. As for the noise, I live in Brooklyn. Okay, but basically, we're, it always starts out on the root, so it's going to use app home as where it starts. So then we can go take a look at the app home component. Do, 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 do. Cool. Now, again, just to kind of tell you the structure, at the very beginning of every component um, TypeScript file, you have to kind of require whatever parts of Stencil you need. So that's what's going on there. And then what you're going to do is you have to define the component class. So this, here's where all, so this is where you're defining, this decorator here defines the component. So here's like the name of the component, which is essentially what the URL tag will look like or the HTML tag will look like, um, where the CSS file is. And then there are other properties that you can define. We'll go over it another time. Okay, here you're exporting it so that way you can use it somewhere else. So you're exporting class app home, and here you're defining the class. So basically, every component is really just a class definition. Okay. And essentially, what we're going to do is there's a render function. That's the render. The render function within the component is what actually shows what's going to be on the page. And whatever that render function returns is what is rendered onto the website. So basically, this render function is being called with no parameters, and it is going to return. And then anything that it returns within the parentheses after the return is what shows up on the screen. OK, and everything has to be wrapped within one parent. So generally, you always want to start out with a div and then put everything within that div. So if you've used React, you know what this is. This is referred to as JSX. So when you're returning and you're basically typing everything out as HTML, this is what's referred to as JSX, which is from React. TypeScript, which is, again, that superset of JavaScript that is typically most associated with use in Angular. Um, this kind of brings the best of both worlds into one. Cool. So we're going to leave it there. We're going to do more in the next video, but, uh, but we've kind of covered a lot in one. So I'll see you guys there.